Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So this is the um, the second day of my trip to Victoria earlier this fall. So in the early afternoon, I am revisiting this Fernwood community that I used to come very often as a student studying at UVic and sketching with the Victoria Urban Sketchers. This is the Belfry Theatre and um, my lunch. And now I'm ready to sketch the view of the lovely theatre building and the trees and a couple of heritage buildings surrounding the theatre. So here is my pencil layout. Um, it's very conceptual, just making sure that I'm including all of the um, buildings and elements that I want to include. So I'm starting with the upper um, area of this red heritage building which is now a, um, a new cafe. So when I was a student about 10 years ago, this building, I think it used to be a restaurant. Now just laying out these uh, medium shapes. Most of these shapes are rectangles in distorted shapes because we're looking at this building from an angle. Okay, so I just laid out the upper floor of this building and these layers of horizontal lines um, dividing the upper floor and the ground level. Okay, now I'm just drawing that canopy area and then adding a man with his baby on his left in the stroller. Just really trying to capture, you know, a sense of humanity in my urban sketches rather than just sketching dry buildings only. I love to include human figures in my urban sketches. And I'm um, drawing another lady. I think she's walking her dog, just drawing the leash and the little dog walking in front of her. Yeah. The community life here at Fernwood. And they're just drawing that little column there, supporting the canopy of the ground level, the entrance of the cafe. And um, yeah, so the entrance area is kind of covered up by my bubble tea that I got the day before from the bubble tea place in Chinatown, Victoria. Now just adding some more inner details for the upper floor. It's again, a lot of horizontal and vertical lines to see and lay out, adding these blocks of windows, the carved out shape of the window panels, shading in these glassy areas with solid brown ink because during daytime, um, the windows are looking very dark. And then adding the, uh, the framing shapes for these two windows and shading in just partially uh, with my solid brown ink because I could see curtains um, draping behind the, the glassy window panels. So windows during daytime, they're not always solid, um, solid black. And um, adding some more little details for the ground level. These are like little square window panels. Okay. And um, using very gentle hand pressure to create these loose horizontal lines for the uh, rustic brick texture. Okay, so that's the foreground building. So now I'm ready to add these little elements of a cityscape, like this lamp post bending, pointing at the theater. Yeah, so that's a pretty cute little gesture for this lamp post. And these little symbols of pedestrians on the signs are just really adorable. Okay, so now I'm ready to lay out the left side of the theater. Um, it's a triangular roof shape, the body part the bottom of the theater. This is the, f the large, one of the large chunks of the theater house's body. And then filling in the inner details like this large arch of a window. And a lot of vertical lines and horizontal lines of stained glass. And quickly adding these uh, textural details for the exterior of this building. A lot of loose and short segments of lines and other details in between the bottom of this section of the theater. And then the concrete base of the tower area. And now just drawing this uh, main part of the theater, which as you can see is a rectangular prism and um, layers of eaves with the, uh, the steeple in the shape of a pyramid where we can see two triangles and then adding the inner details for the steeple 
and then uh, suggesting a bit more three-dimensionality by adding these um, accentuations, a lot of parallel lines to show the, uh, the texture of the roof, the shingles. Yeah, so once the general, the most important three-dimensional structures are done, it's just so fun and uh, much easier to draw these inner details like the eave and this um, lovely shapes of the windows for this tower area and the, the ground floor window with stained glass over here and the belt and they have a sign there on the bottom a lot of cute little shapes for this tower area and the name of the theater is called the Belfry Theater adding some more medium and small blocks and loose horizontal lines for the textures of the exterior window panels and shading in many of the glassy areas with solid brown ink for a sense of depth that there's really rooms behind these windows and now i'm starting to draw these windows on the right side so this side is foreshortened seen from uh, from my perspective over here on the other side of the street yet yeah, they're smaller or more skinny compared to these windows here in the front yeah adding some more inner details wavy lines and loose horizontal lines arches and also little blocks of rectangles so this theater building, as you can see, um, it used to be a church. And the, um, so the theater company bought this building a few decades ago and turned it into a really lovely little theater. Um, I was in there once, I think in the uh, first or second year of my university life with, a, with my roommate uh, to watch a show in here. And adding these extremely foreshortened or squished shapes of the side chambers and the last cubicle of the theater building right there. Yeah, and also it's a small tower over here with a pyramid rooftop. And adding minimal amount of details, those windows look tiny there in the, in the distance. And then drawing the side entrance and then connecting that with a tree and the street lamp. Yeah, so I just love drawing these uh, street lamps and posts uh, because they add a nice sense of, you know, guide for the viewers to, um, to look at all the details around this urban sketch. So as you can see, the, uh, the two lamp posts, they're all pointing towards the middle, towards the, uh, the steeple of the theater, which is the central focus. And yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons I like to include these two lamp posts. And now I just drew the tree behind and the biggest tree over here. Not sure about the name, but um, it's very spherical for the canopy. And uh, the branches and the twigs are really beautiful. On the bottom, I think there is a sign adding some squiggly lines for the foliage texture. A large tree canopy is also made up of uh, many, many small clusters of little spheres accentuate around the branches. Some small details in between. Just finish off the uh, side entrance. And just adding final bits of polish, adding some accentuation by drawing over some of the lines again, just so those shapes pop up better. And last bit of details like um, those little thingies in between the trees and lampposts and the sidewalk. Yeah, I need to draw that. And giving the sidewalk a bit of thickness by doing another um, parallel line on the bottom. Now, the uh, pedestrian's crosswalk is also very, very important. That I must include those white stripes to invite the viewer to see the theater and to give a strong sense of perspective. And that's it. And as you can see, the, the sky is overcast and it's a little chilly. I hope it's not going to get way too windy. Um, I very, very rarely give up a sketch, almost never. I finish both the drawing and watercolors on location pretty much all the time.
unless it's uh, it's raining cats and dogs all of a sudden that I give up um, a painting. So now I am painting watercolors, starting with the sky as always, just wetting the sky with clear water and adding these uh, diluted lemon yellows. Even the sky is gray. I can still always feel the warm sunshine trying to push through the thick clouds. So yeah, I'm adding these um, tints of lemon yellow and diluted yellow ochre, spreading it around the sky area. And also for most of the objects under the sun, they're also getting the tint of sunshine despite that it's an overcast day. So this very first layer of the watercolors, um, I also like to call it the underpainting. These are not the original colors of these buildings and items. Um, it shows the um, luminosity of daytime that I always like to do for an urban sketch. Okay, and now after the, uh, the underpainting stage, after waiting for this tint of yellow to dry off a little bit, I'm starting to add on um, the first layer, very much the original colors of these buildings and other elements. So this is a terracotta color that I mix with uh, magenta and burnt sienna. So depending on the can depending on the kind of red brown that you're seeing, you can play with a ratio of more or less magenta into burnt sienna. Yeah, so some of the sections of this building is more uh, reddish, so I mix a little bit more uh, magenta into burnt sienna. And again, playing with water control because these uh, red browns are of different values. And now I'm grabbing a bit more concentrated yellow ochre to paint these um, exterior stripes for the main tower area, just to match what I see. Yeah, and keep playing with water control, still using yellow ochre. In certain areas, the yellow is um, a diluted version of yellow ochre. Now grabbing some burnt sienna and a little bit blue to shade the burnt sienna for a sepia color for painting the tree trunks, branches, and boles for this lovely tree. And grabbing some sepia that I mix with some burnt sienna and uh, cobalt blue for the steeple of the theater and some leftover bluish gray for the concrete area some blue tints for the steeple area so a lot of muted colors here so the colors of everything under the sun could be very unstable depending on the weather so the color scheme on an overcast day and rainy day and at, at nighttime is very, very different compared to a bright sunny day. So now I'm playing with various um, grays that I mix with blue, green, and magenta. As you can see, um, some of the grays is more bluish and um, other brush strokes are more purplish. Also playing with water control to achieve a really nice sense of fluidity with watercolors. Yeah, so these clouds, they are moving with the wind in diagonal directions to give a really nice three dimension for the sky. So painting the clouds this way, um, it gives an illusion that the sky is looking much bigger than just that space behind um, the theater building. Now I am grabbing a little bit of hooker screen and a little bit of yellow ochre to mix the, uh, the mid-tone of green for this uh, large canopy of the tree here. Because it's an overcast day, I don't see very strong yellow greens um, on these trees' canopies. But landing on a bit of uh, hooker screen, and also hooker screen mixed with burnt sienna for those uh, shade colors of green for the lower part of the canopy. In this way, I'm creating a really nice three-dimensionality for the canopy, which is a sphere. So usually the bottom part of a tree's canopy is pretty intensely shaded. So again, you can use burnt sienna to shade your green and use a little choppy brush strokes for the fluffy texture of leaves. And same for this shorter tree here on the bottom of the big one. 
using a diluted version of mid green first, and then a bit more concentrated version of green on the bottom of the canopy. Yeah, some little dashes of green um, around the concrete area of the theater building. And now I'm grabbing some fresh hooker screen to paint the, uh, the window frames, yeah, which echoes with the, uh, the greens of the trees. Yeah, so these greens are standing out really well from the yellow and yellow brown of the exterior of the building here. Yeah, same for underneath the eave, the painted panels in green color here and there using pretty thin brush strokes, holding my brush almost 90 degrees to the surface of paper. Okay, so the atmosphere of the scenery is here. Now I just need to intensify some of the colors. Um, yeah, these panels should be green, a diluted version of green. I just love these um, colorful heritage buildings. It's kind of like a fantasy world. And then using some leftover gray to give shadows for the theater building and other little objects. Yeah, and the thickness area of the sidewalk is also a pretty intense gray. As well at the lamp posts. So now I need another slightly more intense sepia for the steeple. Yeah, using brush strokes to give a bit of relief texture of the shingles. Um, some stronger green for these little panels. To suggest the texture is that the green paint is done over bricks using a little choppy green brush strokes and some more grays for the window panels on the ground level. Yeah, some grays behind the curtains. Some green for the window frames. Yeah, so these greens are really echoing very well with the trees on the right side. And um, some brown, slightly more intense for the theater building. And keep adding another layer of stronger sepia using a short choppy horizontal brush marks to suggest the pieces of shingles to give more weight for the rooftops. Yeah, so layering in watercolors is always very essential to give um, texture and weight. So around the last stage of the painting process, my brush strokes are getting smaller and more precise for this intensely shaded areas like the top of the tree branches there on the right hand side, a shadow from the sidewalk. And using a lot of leftover grays to shade one side of these uh, rectangular prism shapes of the uh, theater building. Yeah, the three dimensionality needs to be accentuated with one shaded side. Shadow for the tree, and some stronger sepia, you have to shade these um, vertical rectangular prisms and again these choppy brush marks for the brick texture. And this big tree here, it needs to be having a higher contrast here on the bottom, so uh, more concentrated hooker screen mixed with burnt sienna, slightly more choppy brush strokes for more refined shapes of leaves, yeah, mostly on the bottom. Same for this little, I believe it's a cherry tree here. And last bit of colors, just to paint these people's outfits from memory. Again, most, most people these days, they like to wear um, gray shirts, jackets, and pants. And final polish, that's it. Here is the look of my finished sketch. It took me about one hour to draw and paint on location after lunch. And now it's time to move on to my next sketching spot before having dinner and then catch the ferry back home. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how I sketch the Catboro Beach around my university. So see you again very soon next time, everyone. Bye.